Hi everybody, welcome to your weekly dose. My name is Lauren and I'm part of the visitor engagement team here at the Calgary Zoo. Today, we are meeting one of my favorite brown fuzzy mammals, the Vancouver Island Marmot. This incredible species is uniquely Canadian and they are only found, guess where? On Vancouver Island in British Columbia. They are endangered under the Species at Risk Act. Their population started declining in the 1990s, likely due to some habitat changes that led to an increase in being eaten by predators. And in the year 2003, there were only 30 individuals left on Vancouver Island. That means only 30 individuals left on the entire planet. Well now, thanks to an incredibly innovative conservation breeding and reintroduction program, their numbers are doing a little bit better. They're up to about 200, but they're not out of the woods yet. Today, we are going to take you right into the heart of conservation research and meet senior field technician Llewellyn Haynes and learn a little bit more about this amazing conservation project. In addition to conservation breeding, the Calgary Zoo is also working to understand marmot survival and reproduction. Llewellyn and the research team, along with our partners from the Marmot Recovery Foundation, spent time this year studying those marmots in the wild to better understand the factors that lead to their survival. Today, we're gonna to chat a little bit more with Llewellyn and get to know a little bit more about the program that's happening on Vancouver Island. Can you describe what the purpose of the research is? So the study is um, based on the idea that if we provide marmots with extra food, um, this should hopefully improve their body condition prior to hibernation. And with that, we hope that they survive better over the winter and then they're more likely to re reproduce the next spring. So marmots have a long hibernation, about 210 days of the year. So it doesn't really leave them that much time to fill up on important calories they need for the winter. Female marmots tend to breed every second year, so we're hoping this extra food will help females produce pups more consistently and increase the wild population. How do you capture a marmot to get the data that you need? Uh, it's a bit of a waiting game really, so we bait the traps with something marmots find irresistible, um, like peanut butter, they love it, and then we sit and wait in the meadows, uh, watching them from afar. Sometimes they go into the traps relatively quickly, or sometimes we're there for two, three, four hours waiting for them to go in the traps. And then once we get them, we just cover the traps so they're not scared, and then we weigh them with a with a handheld scale. At the end of this, we'll take this data to analyze and see if it makes a difference to their survival and reproduction. How do you access your field sites? We have to hike into pretty much every site. The hikes range from anywhere from like 15 minutes to two plus hours. Uh, the marmots live in some of the most scenic and amazing uh, mountain habitat. You know, in the spring and summer when the snow starts melting, you know, the subalpine meadows are just filled with wildflowers. Um, it's not always easy to get to the sites, that's for sure. And some of the spots they like to hide in are pretty tough to access. You know, I've seen them climb up pretty vertical rock faces that we would never get up. But yeah, it's just beautiful being out there. Um, it's nice to be able to hike and be out in these beautiful areas. And yeah, it's just something I really enjoy. And finally, Llewellyn, why do you love marmots so much? They're a really curious animal. Um, they have this great whistle call that they make to signal to each other that a predator is near. It's not great to hear when you're too close to them. Um, it's pretty ear, ear piercing. They're great to watch. I just love watching them run around and feeding. And I really love pup season when the pups first start coming up in the beginning of July. That's always exciting to see if there's pups at a site or not. It's still such a rare animal. I think we should do everything we can to keep them here. Thank you so much for tuning into this edition of the Weekly Dose. Next up on your Weekly Dose at home, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into some of the cool parts of the conservation breeding program that happened right here at the Calgary Zoo. Thanks for tuning in and thank you for supporting wildlife conservation.